everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. We're going to be tackling a major topic that's been coming up in the discussion around the TV show, and that's whether Amazon should release all of the episodes of the Wheel of Time at once, or if they should release one a week like popular on TV. In this video, we'll take a look at the reasons why the binge model came about, why it became popular, and look at the pros and cons of each style of delivering content. Then I'll let you know what I think Amazon will end up doing. Before answering all that, let me take a moment and thank Audible.com for their sponsorship of the channel. They have been a major partner for me as the channel's grown a lot lately, and they are giving my viewers a very special offer. You can get a 100% free audiobook and help out the channel at the same time. If you didn't already know it, Audible.com is the largest provider of audiobooks in the world, and they have literally thousands upon thousands of titles to choose from. You can test out the service by getting your own free audiobook by going to www audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and signing up for a one month free trial. You can cancel the service if you don't want to keep it, but you still get to keep your audiobook. For those of you that want to do a reread before the show drops next year, doing it on Audible is the way I recommend. The audiobooks are a completely different experience, definitely check it out. This video will carry a spoiler warning of green, meaning there will be no spoilers of any kind, feel free to watch the video regardless of where you are in the books. So let me first say, most of you are familiar by now with the binging strategy employed by most streaming services as it goes with their content. They release all of the episodes of a show at once rather than spreading them out over weeks. This allows viewers to watch all of the episodes in a row rather than needing to wait a week in between. This way of delivering content was popularized by Netflix, and it's a formula they've stuck to since they've really started making their own content. It had its roots in the fact that the first shows Netflix offered were other television shows from other networks that had been finished, and they were just rebroadcasting that content. They noticed that viewers of their service would tend to binge all of the shows watching tons of episodes in a row. As they started creating their own content, they took the same strategy. When asked why they released their content this way, Netflix executive Ted Sarandos said in 2016, there's no reason to release it weekly. The move away from appointment television is enormous. So why would you want to drag people back to something they're abandoning in huge numbers? He also went on to say that their data leads them to believe that people don't juggle multiple different shows anymore, but rather focus on one show until it's completed and then start another one. Basically, Netflix is saying that the trends in the way consumers consume content lead to the binge method. At first, Amazon resisted following this method and went for a more traditional approach to releasing their content, coming to a compromise where they would release a few episodes at a time rather than all at once. Later, they did copy the binge method from Netflix, and as of today, there are only a few shows they have released recently that did not follow that binge method of releasing content. Grand Tour had weekly episodes, and The Tick had five episodes released, followed by another six a few months later. So what are the pros and cons of the binge method of releasing content? Well, let's start with the pros. From a production company standpoint, there are a number of pros, some of which are dependent on the type of show you're creating. The big advantage to creating a show to be binged is that the pacing can be much faster. In a serialized television series, which basically means a show that follows large story arcs over time, rather than a focus on standalone episodes, the pacing is naturally faster and the stories don't need to be compressed to fit in a standalone episode. The reason for this is that in a weekly format, each episode needs to be able to hold up decently well on its own. If not, people forget what has been happening with the characters and the plot lines when they aren't focused solely on that story. Obviously, this isn't universally true, as there have been some very successful serialized shows that have been released in the weekly format. But releasing a show to be binged does give a slight advantage on character building, as you can spend more time with a character, and there's less necessity to make a totally self-sufficient story in each episode. Another major pro to binge content, people love to binge. It is really becoming a pastime for most people to sit down and watch four or five episodes of a show in one sitting, sometimes more than that. There have actually been scientific studies into the effects and reasons why people do this. It is proven to be relaxing and there's an addictive nature to being able to satisfy your desires immediately. We live in an immediate gratification world and binging really fits that narrative. So what about the cons? Well, one major one I see is there is less talk about a show and therefore less buzz around it when it's available to binge. Obviously, this isn't true all the time, but on the whole, it's much easier to generate buzz and excitement when you're forced to wait for something. This is due to the same psychology that makes us love to binge. When we're forced to wait, that anticipation builds excitement. It also makes an event out of the show. We tend to talk about this stuff at work and with friends. What's gonna happen this week? 
What did you think about that last week? These things tend not to happen as much when we're talking about a binged show. Let's take a look at one of the more popular binge shows in the last few years in Stranger Things. We didn't talk about what we thought would happen or even talk much about it at all. Most of the conversation that many of us had around that show is centered around, hey, I love Stranger Things, it's cool, you should watch it too. That isn't the type of conversation that's gonna entice others to watch it and having debates at lunch and discussions over social media, it just doesn't tend to lend itself to that. The more buzz a show can generate, the more viewers it will have and the more money it will make for its broadcaster. So what do I want to happen? Well, I'd personally love to see it released weekly. From a selfish standpoint, it will make my work as a content creator much easier as I'll have time to get out a few videos about each episode in between each episode. If it's streamed, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to create content and basically create sustained content about the show. But also, I love the anticipation of the new episode and the event that it could be. To me, that's the enjoyable part about watching a show, and I'd rather not have my experience be all in one night as much as I would enjoy that, as I really would probably watch it all in one night. So what do I think is gonna happen? Well, if I had to guess, I think we're gonna get all the episodes dropped at once. This tends to be what Amazon does now, even though they have bucked this trend in the past. The only hope that I believe that we'll have is that some of the shows that the Wheel of Time is gonna be modeled after, like the Game of Thrones, were released weekly, and they did very well for that type of story. If they wanna recapture that magic, they may try and copy that style of releasing content. Amazon has done that recently, even though it's not their trend. So I'm curious what you all think about this. Would you prefer the content to be released all at once or weekly? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd also like to announce the contestants for the Wheel of Time Jeopardy with Daniel Green that will be coming later here this week. Uh, we did a contest from the last video to get into this contest uh, where you had to go to the Facebook group and put down your Wheel of Time story. Our first contestant will be MK, who happens to be one of my moderators, uh, as well as Angry Trevor from my Discord. For those of you who cry nepotism with MK being selected, I'd say you're absolutely right. She does a lot of work for the channel, and her story is a powerful one in the Facebook group, uh, basically meaning her Wheel of Time story. She's deserving of playing in this initial game. So be on the lookout for that video here soon. If you liked the video, please take a moment and smash that like button, as it really, really, really helps out the channel. And make sure to subscribe to get notified when I release new content. You can hit the bell icon to get physical notifications. Also, if you want to support what I do here, please take a moment and check out my Patreon, where you can get some exclusive Patreon-only content. Recently, I've been releasing some new Wheel of Time maps that I've been making. So some patrons have seen those. You'll be seeing those in some future videos. Make sure to check that out. The link is also in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out, y'all. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?